Adventures in Paradise. Starring Gardner McKay as Adam Troy. The Color of Adam. Guest stars Vincent Price, Shauna Eden, John Van Dralen, and introducing Henry Slate as Lovey. Captain aboard? Captain Troy ashore. Oh, uh, when will he be back? Don't know. Captain, get supplies. Birds are sailing for riot here tomorrow morning. Say, how many men you got signed on? Oliver Key, me, Captain Troy. Oh, three men including the captain, huh? You don't suppose you signed on anybody else, do you? You got any passengers? I don't know. Ah, oh, well. Captain Troy and me are old friends. You don't mind if I wait aboard, do you? I'll go take a look below and see how the skipper's fixed up the old bucket. Not bad, considering our age. You know, you must take good care of your boat. This is my first trip. Captain Troy signed me yesterday. Well, he got himself a good man. <laughs> yes, sir. All neat and tidy, just like the skipper. Well, thanks for letting me take a look around. <laughs> Go ahead. Daddy, leaving you like this, Adam. Now, don't worry about it. These things happen. Now, you tell your grandfather I said to get well soon. Honolulu's a long way. If he weren't the head of my family, Look, I... you've got a plane to catch. Now, don't worry about the tiki. I'll pick up someone along the docks. Uh, I'll get back as soon as I can. Now, good luck. Look out for those wahinis. You know me, partner. Wouldn't be needing a new hand, Skipper. Captain Troy. He is here. Good. Adam, come in. <laughs> Bonjour, mon vieux. Ça va bien? Ah, pas mal, tout souvent. Come in. I'm sorry to disturb you. I know you are sailing tomorrow morning. And loading cargo tonight, my friend. What do you need? Adam, I sent for you for a special reason. I want to ask you a favor. Now, now. Before you say yes or no, I want to add that this is in the nature of an unofficial assignment for the French police. In other words, you will be paid. Well, now, that's the kind of favor I like. Uh, 
Adam, I have a troublemaker on my hands. A real troublemaker. I need your help. Here. Last week, on the other side of the island, a fight. Two men admitted to the hospital. Thursday night, a drunken brawl at Quinn's. One man suffered a broken jaw, another one took crack ribs, and there was considerable damage to the establishment. Well, now, business Quinn does, he can afford to pay the damage. True. Nonetheless, last night was the worst episode yet. One of my own men became a victim. Oh, the final straw. Exactly. Last night, I placed the troublemaker under arrest. Then, uh, then what's your problem? True. I had no concrete evidence that the prisoner is a cause of these disturbances yet. In my own mind, I'm certain. Then you can't hold him on a hunch. Voila. You understand? I do not want the prisoner free to terrorize Tahiti, yet I have no legal right to keep the prisoner in jail. That is my problem. Ah, but you have an answer. I have decided to send the prisoner home. Oh, nothing so severe as a as an official deportation, just a trip away from Tahiti. On my boat. On your boat. Why me? My prisoner has a home and family in Rayatea. Tomorrow you sail for Rayatea. Compris? Je compris. But I'm not running a floating penal colony. I'll get somebody else. Wait, Adam, wait. Adam, I have always admired you as a man of courage and ability. Now, would I ask you to take a job I did not think you could handle? Hmm? Send the prisoner in, please. If after you meet the prisoner, you are afraid the assignment is too much for you, I am willing to forget the request. Fair enough. You should have handled the Dreyfus case. <laughs> Luana Monet, your passenger. Too bad. Your eyes should have been blue. No? It's a long way from Korea. It's a long way from the LST. What are you doing in Tahiti? Well, I'll level with you, Skipper. Secret mission for the Admiral. Top secret. Oh, that would be Admiral Flanders, huh? Flanders? Yeah, Flat Top Flanders, he's sink pack. Flat Top? Oh, sure, sure, Flat Top. Yeah, that's the one. Had a meeting with his exec a couple of weeks ago up at Pearl. Important stuff. I wish I could tell you about it, Skipper, but it's, uh, hush, hush. Oh, yeah, those would be those new tests at Canton Island. Canton? Yeah, the Navy's conducting some underwater demolition tests. They're looking for volunteers, top men, like yourself. Me? Underwater demolition? Truth is, <laughs> I turned it down. I was yellow. But you told me you were talking to Flat Top Planners at Pearl. At least that's what you said. Oh, uh, what's the use? I can never snow you. <laughs> Truth is, I was mustered out last month. You? Francis Xavier, Bulldog Lovey out of service? Well, I might as well fold up the fleet. Uh, I mean it, Adam. I had my 30 years in, I draw a monthly pension. I'm an old man. <laughs> You're not old. You lied about your age when you enlisted. Since when is a man in his early 40s old? Well, that's how you feel, Skipper. I'm finished. Over the hill. 
Right now, I'm looking for a place to lie down and die. You mean you're hungover? Gee, right, man. I got the granddaddy of all hangovers. It was that miserable island liquor that done it. Uh -huh. I swear I didn't have more than two or three drinks. And then you got roped. How'd you guess? And you don't have a dime until your next check arrives from the government. Skipper, you're a genius. A real genius. Gee, Raymond, are you? Gus, go ahead. Oh, Captain Troy. Two high ninis, please. You betcha. Let's see if you can make out this list. Oh, put a dozen limes on there. All right. Bulldog, you're about to make some money. Good. You're going to meet a beautiful lady. Yeah? What's her name? Tiki. She's not young, but, uh, but she's got class, and she likes men of the sea. This is a dream. It's got to be a dream. Well, she's looking for a man like you, and you can handle her. But I've got to warn you. She is no play. She can be a very hard mistress. to try your luck in the galley. Me? Cook? Well, I hired a hand yesterday, but... but he seems to have jumped ship even before we sailed. Okay. If you can eat it, I can cook it. <laughs> Kirimini! Get a load of that! That's our passenger? Yep. Mademoiselle, shall we? Your Honor. Your Honor. Your Honor. Hmm. But she's marked hands off secret cargo to not open until Christmas. Okay. Okay, I get the message. Bonjour. Captain Troy, your passenger is ready. Yes, we'll get her on board, Trouva. We're running late. What was it? Bonjour, mon capitaine. Votre bateau est vraiment magnifique. Je me réjouis de cet heureux voyage. This is a deck, Miss Monet, not a dance floor. I think you'll find it easier to walk around without the high-heeled shoes. Oh. Thank you. Voilà. Anything else that displeases you? My hat? My dress? Adam. If you don't need me any longer... I don't need you, Trugo, anymore. Ah, Lieutenant, I'm so sorry to leave you. You have such a charming day. Do us both a favor, Miss Monet. Don't visit it again. Oh, but why should I? <laughs> I have lost a lieutenant. But I have gained a capitan. Mister? That remains to be seen, Miss Monet. Goodbye, Adam. Bon voyage. Goodbye, Trouble. Take Miss Monet below to her cabin. Yes, sir. Secure the landing cloud for sir. It is very urgent that I get to Riotia. Lovey, hit the deck and help with the lines. Please, monsieur, I have sailed a great deal. I will be no trouble to you. Twenty-five thousand francs. This is no luxury liner. Fine. Uh, show Mr. Duchette to the midship cabin. Good weather, Mr. Duchette. Clear sailing is the term, Mr. Pine. Clear sailing.
Adventures in Paradise is now being brought to you by... Chesterfield! Nothing satisfies like the big, clean taste of top tobacco in Chesterfield King, the cigarette of the men of America. Look, Miss Monet, why don't you... Luana? Luana, go to bed. I'm not sleepy. Well, I've got pills on board for that. But you haven't got any pills for that. You don't like me, do you? Well, I hadn't thought about it one way or the other. Oh, really? So why were you watching me this afternoon when I was sunbathing? Tell me, Captain, what did you decide? Was I the criminal type? Well, that depends on what you mean by criminal. Mon dear, you are cautious. You choose your words with great care. I choose everything with great care. Including you women? Yeah, you get right to the point, don't you? And you answer always with a question, don't you? No. No, I don't. And this isn't a question. Go to bed. Now, that depends on who is asking the question, doesn't it, Capitan? Good night. Good night, Capitan. What are you doing here? Uh, Troy's topside with a mate, and the girl's making coffee. And unless it's a risk, what do you want? So I want to ask a question. The same one I asked yesterday. What are we waiting for? And shall I give you the same answer, Mr. Pine? Shall I remind you that I have no intention of destroying our carefully made plans? Yesterday in Tahiti, I was alone on the boat. I could have taken that band instead was... Instead, you obeyed my orders and signed on as a member of the crew. Hmm? And why did you do what I told you, Mr. Pine? Because you said we needed the boat. And has the situation changed? Are we free, you and I, to board a steamer like tourists and travel where we want? <laughs> the answer is still no, Mr. Pine. And why is that, Mr. Pine? Because we rushed in once before and were caught. No. I have no desire to return to that prison island or to New Caledonia for that matter. But what about the five? I know, I know. You're going to tell me how, how you have waited for five long years to get what belonged to you. Well, I have waited too, Mr. Pan. Five long years and six months more to locate the Tiki. And now that I have found her, I have no intention of bungling the job. Hmm? Do I uh, make myself quite clear, Mr. Pan? Let me put it this way. The Tiki contains what we came for, and she can take us where we want to go. No police, no customs, no problems. Hmm. Until we get the riot here. Mr. Pine. The Tiki. 
he will never reach her, dear. But Skipper, uh, how come Pine knows where everything is on board? He works the lines like he was raised on the Tiki. I feel that way about you, Shet. Well, I get the feeling he knows the ship. When I came topside to take the helm, they had their heads together. The minute they saw me, Duchette went below. Bobby, the Tiki's over 40 years old. She's had a dozen skippers and hundreds of passengers and hands. Suppose they have been on board before. It's not a crime. A well, knife is quicker and sure. There are three of them now, not just Captain Troy. And one of us must remain at the helm. And the chance of a slip-up is too great. No, my friend, I do not wish to return to prison. That was for smuggling, not murder. Do I find the years any more comfortable because I... because I knew that I was cautious for smuggling? No, the clumsy days are past. Now, Mr. Pine, finesse is the word. Finesse. Here. Yeah. See for yourself. Three rare and lovely ones. The deadliest species of all. Now, Mr. Pine, even you will have to admit that that is... Just now, found it on the deck in the cargo hold. Was checking to see if everything was ship shape. Who do you think was working the cargo hold last night? Me and Harry Pine. And I ain't been in Nomia since Blue Lily's joint burned down. Ready to relieve you, sir. Course 319, wind steady. I relieve you. Course 319, wind steady. Skipper, you don't need me? I don't need you, lovey. Good night. You were telling me about your sailing experiences yesterday, Pine. Ah, oh, yes, sir. Pretty near covered the seven seas. Would that include New Caledonia? Uh, that's right, sir. When? When? When were you in Numea? Last year? Last month? Well, I, uh... A beautiful evening. Truly a beautiful evening. Pine and I were just talking about Numea. Ever been there, Duchesne? Yes, as a matter of fact, I have. A miserable island, New Caledonia. <laughs> Very little to be said for it. The heavens tonight, like a painting by Van Gogh. Don't you think, Captain? The Tiki used to say a lot of there. In fact, I heard once she was involved in smuggling. In my youth, I used to imagine myself a painter. I was in Paris, of course. On the left bank, everybody fancied himself a painter. But soon I resigned myself merely to enjoying the works of others. Hotel du Marquis, ever stay there? Certainly not. Third rate establishment. What about you, Pine? Uh, never heard of the place, sir. I just thought I'd ask. You know, somebody there was looking for the tiki. I wonder why. You fool. You clumsy fool.
Adventures in Paradise will continue following station identification. And now, back to Adventures in Paradise. Take her to the cabin and give her some brandy. Put her to sleep. And the next time you walk in your sleep, watch where you're going. What a horrible experience. How did it get in here? A fair question. Because they abound in the tropics, except close to the water. Unless... Unless. Unless it came in with your cargo? Well, that's a possibility. Yes. Well, don't worry, Captain. Accidents will happen. Skipper. She wants to talk to you. Look, Lovey, shake down the cargo hold. Terribly ashamed of the way I acted before. Now suppose you don't talk anymore. Now you close your eyes. And I'll sit here while you fall asleep. Most men wouldn't care whether I was frightened or not. We aren't so bad. There was a man. He wasn't so bad. And handsome. He was French. My father. My father used to sit with me and tell me stories about Paris. About the people there. The wonderful places he would one day show me. Versailles, Mama, Champs-Élysées. He went alone. But he never came
Yes, it's morning. We're at Riotea. Now, uh, now get your things together, which we're sure. You sure? Yes. Like I promised to go. Get this cargo out. I want her scrubbed down fore and aft. From the bilge on up, I want her clean as the day she was launched. Aye, sir. Won't miss a nook or cranny, Skipper. There won't be so much as an ant left on board when we get finished. I, uh, I gather that you do not wish to remain in Ratia, is that true? And what business is that of yours? Please, mademoiselle. I am only here to help you. Does, uh, Captain Troy know where your family lives? Now, how should he know about that? Well, then he could hardly tell whether you were leading him to your house or not, could he? Yes, sir? I thought, and uh, this is merely a suggestion, that uh, you might take Captain Troy for a long walk about the island. Perhaps for an hour or so. By that time, he may have changed his mind about leaving. I like that. I like that very much. Good. And to remember to keep him busy for at least an hour. Yes, yes. Mm, the captain is not the kind of man to change his mind quickly. <laughs> yeah. Merci. Ah, Captain, it has been a most interesting voyage. For both of us. Next time you are in Paris, you must come and see my gallery. Well, that might be quite a while. Well, I can assure you the visit will be well worth your while. Abierto. What's with that guy, anyway? I don't know. Whatever it is, we can't prove it. Are you sure you want to put that ashore? I'm ready, Captain. Okay, ready when you are. Now, this one carefully, the 
Where? Where? Yeah, we've been walking for half an hour. Ten more minutes, we'll cover the island. Now, you said north of the village. That's here. Now, where is your mother's house? It has been a long time, Adam. There! That way! We'll dispose of them after we get underway. And the sooner we cast off, the better. First, Mr. Pine, let's make sure that what we came after is still here. Look. Let's cast off. We can get this thing later at sea. Mr. Pine. I still have one scorpion left. Shall I save it for you? the story. There's no family on Riate. You lied to Trubo, you lied to me. No. Why? Well, I've seen you sailing into the dark, and I've seen you at Renee's bar, and you were the kind of man I wanted. The kind of man I always wanted. When I heard that Tiki was sailing for Rayatea, <laughs> I told the lieutenant that I had family there and... Well, the girls on Tahiti told me that you were a good man, that you would take care of me. Well, I don't know where the girls on Tahiti get their information, but I'm not a good man. But now, you pick this place, lady, and you can have it. Adam! for the rest of my life, then. Do I, I'm educated. I, I speak French. I speak English. I, I, I'll go to, to work. I, I swear I'll never go into Queens as long as I live. Please take me with me. Please. Pick up your things. Go on. <laughs> Go on. Adam! They were right about you. You are a good man. Hundred 
thousand dollars. Perhaps more, Mr. Byrne. Do you realize the importance of an original cook? A major discovery. Cleaning out the cabin, Skipper. sooner than we expected. We were just about to get underway. So this is what you came for? Yes. A man finds such treasure once in a lifetime. A previously undiscovered work of art. Paul Gauguin, I'm certain you've heard of him, Captain. He made his fame painting the people of Polynesia. Yes, I've heard of him. And soon he will make his fame all over again. In my personal collection. Mr. Pine is under the mistaken belief that I intend to sell my masterpiece. But like you, he is a Philistine. He would never understand. But I do. Where'd you get this? I stole it. I killed for it. And the cost was cheap. And I'm afraid I will have to do it again. Very carefully. And put it back in the tube. Adam! I came back to see you, Mr. Pine. I thought perhaps you might see me again. Mr. Fine. Bring Miss Monet below. Pine. 
I got him so tied up, he don't know which end is his feet. Oh, good. You stay here with Luana. I'm going into town and get a gendarme. You mean she's coming back with us? Can we use her, Cook? Gee, you're right, man. I'll cook for you. I'll make for you bread food and bananas and lomi lomi and pineapple. And I'm very good at roast pig. I'll bet you are, honey. I'll just bet you are.